at that. You can still see me through it. It still looks like glass. <laughs> Everything is melted. It is gross. My name is Shay, and this week I am making a dress that is made of glass. Kinda. I'm gonna be trying to get as close to a glass dress as I can without actually using glass. This idea has been stuck in my brain for years, ever since I saw this glass dress by Zach Posen in 2015. But then this year, Elle Fanning wore her own version of a glass dress, and it brought this idea back to me in full force. And this time I just decided, why not? This is a dream dress. I'm just gonna try and make it. So let's make a glass dress. So before we start making a glass dress, I have to figure out how to make a glass dress. <laughs> Through my research, there's actually been quite a few glass dresses. Some of them, especially the ones made of real glass, aren't always wearable, but there have been a couple notable ones that are wearable. One of the ones was Zach Posen's dress for Nina Dobrev at the Met Gala. It's a short little Tinkerbell-like number, and from my research, it's actually made of 3D printed resin. There's a special type of 3D printer that 3D prints with resin, and if you use a special technique and print at like 100% density, you can get this really cool, clear effect. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Iris Van Herpen, who's made a couple glass dresses, and she made them out of real glass. They are absolutely breathtaking. She worked with a glass blower, and it's just jaw-dropping, like absolutely incredible. Another more recent glass look was Elle Fanning's look at the Met Gala. I believe her dress was made with a mix of organza and resin, and that's why it looks a little less clear. Um, I like all these interpretations, and they all kind of have their own different techniques and different looks, but for myself, I have a couple different criteria that I want for my glass dress. One, I want it to look like glass. My goal is as crystal clear as I can get it, very Cinderella's glass slipper. Number two, it has to be wearable. None of this, oh, it could only be on a dress form stuff. It doesn't have to be practical, but it has to be wearable. Um, and number three, I don't have a crazy budget. <laughs> it has to be doable with the skills, budget, and materials I have. I don't have a resin 3D printer. I am also not a trained glass blower. I'm just someone who sews in their backyard. So it kind of has to be something that people can actually do at home and isn't gonna take like $3,000 of equipment to do. So with that info on the inspiration and the constraints that I have, I think before I even start touching designing my dress, I am going to first figure out how to make a glass dress. It's experiment time! AKA, it's time to try a couple different techniques and see if I can make something that looks like glass. So first up, before I mess around with resin or 3D printers, I'm gonna try my own way, which is using thermoplastics. These are sheets of PETG plastic. I haven't done something like this before, so this is very much an experiment. It's a clear sheet of plastic, so I'm just gonna try heating it up with a heat gun and draping it on my mannequin. That way I can almost drape it like it is a garment. I think I have to use resin. Results. They're not bad, but they're not really good either. On the pro side, they're really clear. Look at that, it's like crazy clear. However, it doesn't look like real glass. I couldn't get any of this organic pleats. They just look like wrinkles. And in order to shape it, you have to get it really hot but if you get it too hot, it burns, and it burns white and wrecks the whole piece. I can use resin, I just don't want to. As a last ditch effort before resorting to resin, I took the advice of some folks on Instagram and they suggested clear warbler. We might have found a backup, I still might not have to use resin. This is very similar to PETG, it's a clear thermoplastic. It heats up at a much lower temperature, it's supposedly a lot more easy to mold. It also is a lot more expensive. PETG was maybe like, 10, 20 bucks, this was 80. But let's give it a shot to see if it even works. I am doing like everything in my power to avoid using resin. First thoughts already, this stuff is way more flexible than the last one I used. It feels more like plastic wrap than it does a plastic sheet. I just worry it might be too delicate, you know? Already so much better, my God. Look at those organic shapes I was able to make, the pleats. I'm so happy with this. <laughs> I did not have hope for this, but look at that. Once you get it hot enough, you can really just like mold it and it'll drape to itself like fabric. And it didn't have any of the problems of Pet G where it burned or it did weird stuff. You can see he's a little thin and flimsy. So I don't think in that sense it really looks 
great, but in the sense of looks, it looks so good. And look how clear it is. Like, the only bad thing is it is pretty expensive and I'll probably need like two or three rolls. So it's gonna be like a $300 project, which is a little pricey, but sometimes if that's the material that works, that's the material that works. <laughs> I think this might be the method. I think I might not have to use resin. It's a good test. Okay, so not great news about this guy. He does not like to keep his shape. As a little test, I left it in my car, parked in a parking lot, just to see what would happen. It did not keep its shape. So I don't think it's gonna survive storage. And if I'm gonna put a bunch of hours into making this dress, I kind of want it to last past summer. So I've tried literally every way to avoid this, but it is resin time. Resin still terrifies me, so I'm going to safety up, get gloves, get a respirator on, and just do a couple test pours. Okay, let's do it. And I'm not sure if resin is just gonna have enough strength on its own, so I'm going to be using a sheer illusion netting with it and kind of soaking the illusion netting in it to get that like very clear effect. Okay, it is set, it has done its thing. Let's see ah, how it looks. Okay, okay, I thought I stuck this to the mannequin accidentally. She peels off pretty easily. Okay, I need to try this again. This was a fail. Yeah, that resin test was not super successful. The illusion mesh was not giving any illusion. It just looked like tan mesh. And the resin I poured without the mesh was just way too thin and breaking. So I tried again, this time with a thicker resin pour. I didn't really like the way that the resin looked with the sheer tool, so I'm just gonna try straight resin and see if that works. That one was even more of a fail. So, step one. Don't be dumb and leave it in the sun. Not only did I use clay that melted in the sun, but the resin set unevenly. I cleaned up the mess from that little melty test, and these were the results we were left with. We have good news and we have bad news. Start with the bad news first. <laughs> resin on tool, held its shape great, looks bad. Resin just by itself sucked as well. The big problem you run into with resin is it's gonna always pool in the lowest areas. And what you end up getting is everything just settles into the deepest parts and it just doesn't cover it. So it's just bad. We also get the bonus badness of the clay that I was using melting. That was the bad news. However, all is not lost. I tested clear resin on top of the thermoplastic bus that I made earlier, and I think this might be our winner. Not terrible, we can work with that. Not only did it make it way sturdier, but it also stayed super clear. Like, look at that, you can still see me through it. It still looks like glass. That was a pain in the butt to test everything, but I think we do have a winner. Ah! Now I just gotta find a clay that doesn't melt and a resin that doesn't run. And then we've got it. We've got our resin thing. Okay, let's go. This glass dress is not going to be practical in any way, shape, or form, but I actually do want to try out some new looks for summer, so let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video, ThreadUp. ThreadUp is basically an online thrift store. I like it because it's thrifting, but it's made super easy. You can literally search for specific pieces that you want, so you can literally type in puff sleeve, white crop top, or pink floral summer dress, and you'll get pages of clothing that matches it. It still gives you all the benefits of thrifting, so all these clothes are still secondhand, it's more eco-friendly, it's more budget-friendly, it's just way, way more convenient. Lately, I've wanted to try new styles and participate in some of the new trends, but I didn't really want to support fast fashion and buy new clothes, so instead, I looked to thread up to get a few new pieces and try out a few new styles. Right now, it really feels like summer dresses are the trending style, so I picked out a couple of summer dresses. I particularly love this cider dress. It typically retails for about $51. On ThreadUp, I got it for about $18. I even got this little June and Ivy cardigan to pair with them. It usually retails for $64. On ThreadUp, I got it for just $19.59. And this whole outfit just screams summer picnic to me, so I think I'm gonna wear it to a little picnic on the beach. Another style I've been seeing this summer that I want to try out is what I like to call yacht core. It's like vacation clothes, but a little classy and a little fancy. So I picked up some tall flowy pants and cute poofy tops that I could style into my own classy, fancy summer looks. Lastly, I wanted to try a bit of an experimental style. So I picked up this ASOS pink skirt for $15 on Freda. It typically retails for $48. And I styled it to match the whole leather and lace trend that's been popular lately. And I like this skirt in particular because it's 
it's versatile enough where I can also style it into a more cutesy look that matches more of my personal pink flowery style. But genuinely, I love to shop from ThreadUp so much. Most of the clothes you see me wearing in my videos, even the videos not sponsored by ThreadUp, are still from ThreadUp. So definitely check out ThreadUp, try out some new summer fashion styles, and shop secondhand. You can use my code SHAY for 45% off and free shipping on your first order. But now that we've gotten all the real clothes sorted out for summer, we can get back to making the silly and practical ones. So let's make that glass dress. Now that I finally have something that I think is gonna work, let's go pick up some more supplies and get started on our final dress. We got the goods. So after all of that materials testing, this is what I've come up with as my final plan. I'm gonna start by making a sculpt of the final dress shape I want out of clay. For this sculpt, I'm actually just using Crayola's Model Magic, which is a non-toxic kids modeling clay. And I just ended up using this one because it was on sale in the craft store. It's non-toxic, and most importantly, it shouldn't give me any troubles with heat because it is an air dry clay. With my clay, I am just going to essentially build up the skirt. Because I am shaping the thermoplastic directly on this dress form, I need to give it a skirt that it can mold to. It's kind of just me slapping clay on the dress form and pushing it into the shape that I like. This is just the base the clear plastic is gonna take the shape of, but I'm so happy with it. Now all I've gotta do is just take this shape and make it clear. That's tomorrow's problem though. I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, she is dry. I've got my clear warbler. I am scared. This is literally the first time I've done a project in a while and nothing has gone wrong. There's been no, it accidentally melts on me. No, I sewed through my finger. None of that shenanigans. It just worked the first time. I don't want to jinx it. Dude! <gasps> Dress. It really looks like glass. I'm already so happy with this. Honestly, I could probably stop right here and just leave it like this, but I am gonna add that resin coat on top, not only to make it a little bit more durable, but also to give it a little bit more of that glassy water look. It came out so much better than I thought it would. Oh. Because it's supposed to look like glass, the dress is actually clear. So I tried wearing it over just a nude leotard, but I think that looked a little weird. So I ended up grabbing some iridescent fabric and whipping up a quick little underdress, just so that there was something under the dress and it didn't look totally sheer. This is such just like a cute dress. There's not a single stitch in this, it's all hot glue. And with that, this is kind of the final look. Let's go do a little photo shoot. And that is the final glass dress. For just experimenting and trying out new materials, I'm pretty dang proud of it. It's clear, I made it out of stuff that I mostly had at home, and it is wearable, so I think I did the thing. Wearable is a little debatable because it's still not comfortable. It is a sculptural dress, so you still can't really sit in it, but you can walk around in it, you can move in it, and with any of these sculptural dresses, you have to make those sort of compromises. Also, let me know if you like the underdress. I'm actually still not sure how I feel about it. Like if I was to wear it to an event or a red carpet, definitely I think the underdress makes it look more like a complete look. But I also still kind of like it just clear, where it looks like I'm just wearing this weird clear dress. Because that's what this project's supposed to be, a weird clear glass dress.
but that is pretty much it for this project. This is actually the first time in a while where I don't have any ideas on what I'm gonna make next. So if you have any ideas of things I should make, leave them in the comments. Whether it's a cosplay or dress recreation or an original concept or even like a construction project, leave it in the comments. At this point, I think I've moved past just being a sewing channel, so I'm down to pretty much try making anything. And again, a huge, huge thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Definitely check them out, pick up some new clothes, style some cute summer trends. And if you do end up shopping there, you can use my code SHAY for 45% off and free shipping on your first order. And that really does help this channel, so check it out if you're interested. But thank you for coming to my little glass dress crafting journey. I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!